having worked in both an inpatient and residential and outpatient setting, the most disturbing thing for me as a professional has been that there's this high relapse rate. And it was alarming that the number of people who would recycle, coming back, coming back, coming back. And each time they said it helped them, but it wasn't sufficient. And so having a research model where I was following people up, I tried to talk to the people who were relapsing and figure out what it is they needed that we weren't providing. And so I decided what we were doing was necessary and not sufficient. So as I got older and evolved, what I wanted to do was to set up a program that really incorporated a lot of the things that clients were saying were necessary for the recovery. No one has really mapped recovery for addictive clients. It's a process that takes time over years. No one has really told them what it is that's involved in that process. So what is important about Car Replace Monterey is that for partial hospitalization, anybody can get under control of their addiction if they're locked in a building because you can't have access. And so if you say, well, our success rate is 90% after 30 days, you would be accurate because nobody can get out to use. But then as soon as they go home to their environment where there's all the triggers and risks and stresses, you know, almost all of them relapse. And that's just unacceptable. So the key thing about a partial hospitalization is that once they're able to get under control, then you begin to get them on a day-by-day -day basis to be able to notice what it is that's going on in their environment. Most of the clients who are addicts, they really don't know how to live in the world or live with people. So one of my clients said to me, I came in here to get under control of my eating disorder, but I realized everything in my life has to change for me to be able to maintain recovery. And actually, I think she was absolutely right. Everything in your life has to change. Who you associate with, sometimes what you're doing career-wise, how you're living and interacting with people, relationships that you've chosen, all that tends to be critical. And so you have to begin to look at the whole uh, picture of what's going on in a person's life and how they're living. So one of the things that we've tried to do is we brought in occupational therapists to begin to look at how they socialize, how they interact at work, uh, how they are back in their own homes or apartments. And secondly, to look at their social interactions. So we have a house where people live, find out how they interact with people, which is really critical. And then finally, we hire an occupational therapist who spends time with them and looks at you know, how they cook, where they shop, um, how they work at a, at a career, how they interact with other people, what they do on weekends and evenings, and really begin to examine the way they live their lives. And we use coaches to be able to work with them on setting up new ways of disciplining themselves on a day-by-day -day basis. In the Buddhist tradition, they think of change as something that is has to be done every day as a discipline. So for example, um, in refuge recovery, they talk about how if you want to learn to play the violin, you can't just pick up a violin one day and say, oh, I'm good at it. It takes practice day in and day out and learning new habits. Well, that's really what therapy should be. Therapy should be identifying the habits that you've developed that are self-destructive and then identifying how to change them and then practicing that with the coach's support on a day-by-day -day basis or monitoring on a day-by-day -day basis. And when a person goes off court, you'll be able to bring them back on course. But people have to know, know what they do that doesn't work and then they have to begin to practice doing these new habits of what does work, building up new brain pathways.